So uh, I'll begin with recording and then I'll put it on pause while um, I open it up to any comments, any, any reflections that you'd like to bring. Um, So there's a, something, somebody put something in the chat. Um, so, uh, so Jane has put some resources, suggested some resources. Um, yeah, I also found, um, I also found a, a recording of, um, some shared indigenous voices. Um, it was um, put on by a foundation of, um, uh, who's the tragically hip guy? Uh, Gordon Downey, Gordon Downey, yeah. Uh, yeah, so a foundation was created in his name um, to, uh, for healing and reconciliation um, to support indigenous people. And there was a wonderful recording that was made on June 30th. So um, yeah, so Coral there, Coral, thank you. Always really helpful that you, uh, you have all these, um, uh, these different links that you can share. So so uh, if you're interested in these links, uh, remember to, to, to click on them before the, uh, we, we end uh, so that you have the, uh, the, the link because the chat won't be saved. So um, as I was doing the little reflection in the beginning and I was talking about um, the emerging stories, histories of um, the deaths, un, unrecorded deaths or, or unmarked deaths uh, of indigenous children, um, just really bringing into our shared consciousness the um, the abhorrent violence that was involved in taking this land from indigenous peoples um, over the, and continues uh, over the past centuries. And, um, and at the same time, you know, how do we hold this? And and uh, and we can also, but we can feel tempted perhaps to turn away from the pain of this because it hasn't been an easy year and a half, and um, and we are wanting to uh, open our hearts to the blooming of the summer and reconnecting with friends perhaps. Um, and so there's, there's just, uh, I think, an invitation in our Buddhist practice to be in the midst of it all without um, denying the joy or the sorrow. Uh, that's actually a, um, a translation of the word equanimity. Uh, the word equanimity in Pali uh, is the, the word upeka is usually translated um, a kind of a, a balance, a, a, a sense of um, a, a capacity to, to not be pulled into preference. And there's a, uh, another Pali word, which I'm sorry, I can't recall in the moment, which is also used to express equanimity. And it, and it has a sense of being in the midst of it all. So in the midst of all of life, with all its intensity, all of its joys and sorrows, um, 
without turning away from any of it, without denying any of it. So, um, so that's that's really our practice: to to be to be fully present, to be with an open heart. Um, in the midst of our lives, in the midst of our personal lives, um, which may be also full of joy and sorrow, uh, challenge and blooming and thriving, uh, and the lives around us. It's uh, our lives are really not separate from our families, our communities, our world. It's, it's, it's widening, widening circles. Of course, we have in this body, heart, mind, this is our locus of where we have some opportunity to choose, to respond. So of course there is, it's not to say that there's no differentiation between this sense of being as an individual um, and and the the widening circles of life that are also part of our being um, it's not it's not this or that it's not either or it's not a polarity it's not a you know a uh, a bifurcation or um, a duality. Uh, it's, um, yeah. But we do practice collecting ourselves into this, this body, mind, heart and grounding ourselves in this so that we we can have this sense of groundedness and the sense and develop a sense of collectedness and clarity um, from which we can respond with wisdom and compassion. The Buddha said that um, within this fathom long body, the whole universe arises and falls. So a fathom is somewhere about six feet. <laughs> so, so we may be a little bit less, a little bit more. Uh, so within this body, whatever its shape, whatever its size, whatever its color, whatever its quality of ability, disability, color, uh, language, culture, formation, um, the whole universe arises and, and disappears within our being. And, and as we develop the capacity to collect the mind, to be present, to pay attention, rather than getting pushed and pulled by everything that's arising and passing away, we, we discover that the heart is enormous. It's big enough to hold it all and to be present with it all. Um, so it's a practice. It's a practice that we, sometimes we discover that we are getting pushed around and pulled into reactivity. And, and so it's really important that, that we have, we, that we bring this compassion and understanding to ourselves and, um, and be patient. Patience is such a beautiful quality of heart, a beautiful practice. To, uh, it, it implies forgiveness, it implies steadiness, 
It implies beginning again and valuing what we're doing. So, so, so let's uh, let's gather ourselves together to uh, to sit. So again, feeling the body. sitting on the earth. I'm feeling the body breathing. And as we feel the breath coming in and out of the body, just the body breathing itself, can we reflect for a moment on this radical interdependence that the breath expresses what a radically interdependent action this is, that we could not be alive for more than the briefest amount of time without breath. And that the elements that make up the atmosphere, that we are breathing in and out, have been breathed in and out since the very beginnings of life on Earth. And that all of Mother Earth, all of Gaia, is breathing together. The earth, the trees, the waters, sentient beings on the land, sentient beings in the water and in the sky. all the green life on earth. We're all breathing in and out, out and in together. Supplying one another with what is needed. There is a beautiful indigenous expression used by some nations at the end of a prayer or at the end of sh some sharing that always touches me very deeply. Simply saying all my relations, all my relations. And considering all of the life forms 
that are part of Mother Earth, that are arising into being and passing away. All my relations. And as we bring our attention into the body, can we bring that attitude to the body that this body too is not me, is not mine, is not a thing that I possess as some kind of self. It's part of nature. It's a changing process. It's a rising into being, changing, being nourished, giving back, inhaling, exhaling, consuming, excreting, And dying. This body too is a part of nature. What a precious opportunity to have this conscious aware being to to experience, maybe not have, but to experience, to, to live this conscious aware being in the Dharma. So in whatever way you find most supportive, let this body support your mindful awareness, resting in the breath, resting in a sense, just a sense of there is this body, there is this living body. The feeling of the body resting on the earth. Simply perhaps the mind resting in awareness of itself. As you notice habits of mind pulling you into thinking and fantasizing and so on. Patiently, kindly, with dedication, come back to being present, to being alive in this moment, fully present.
Let's dedicate our practice and the, the blessings, the goodness of our practice, the, the pure intention that has arisen within our hearts, the aspiration to be compassionate, to be wise, to be free. All of this is a blessing. It brings blessings into the field of our lives. And let's dedicate that to healing, to freedom from suffering, to finding our way forward in peace for all beings. <laughs>